Yeah, make sure your light is on. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the April 13th, 2022 Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. And before we get started, will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, great. As I said, welcome to the regular meeting of the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. This meeting will now come to order. Uh, this board will work from a prepared agenda tonight as follows. We will go through our roll call, our approval of the minutes from March 9th, 2022, and approval of a draft written decision for an application heard uh, made at, March 7th, at the March 9th meeting, excuse me, uh, and the approval of draft four draft written decisions for appeals heard at the March 9th meeting. Our new appeals that we'll be looking at tonight will just be one, appeal number 2724, as appeal number 2723 is tabled it for this month. Uh, then we have the zoning board comments, which we will discuss uh, a possible rescheduling of our July meeting. We'll talk about that at the very end. Uh, so with that, let's get into roll call. Dorian, would you please? David Bork? Here. James Hebert? Here. Michelle Stevenson? Richard Silkman? Here. Peter Freilinger? Here. Christine Snow? Here. And Moody Karen? Here. Excellent. I'd like to remind everyone that this is a public proceeding and everyone here has the right to hear and see what is happening. All persons speaking will be asked to first state their name uh, and address or affiliation, and all board members and interested parties are asked to direct their questions through the chair, which is me. So let's go through the approval of the minutes from March 9th. Have we all had a chance to review them? I took some time and reviewed the recording and the minutes from last month. Does anybody have any questions on what we've seen? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve them. Mr. Bork? So, so made. Before we do, I just did have yes. one question. Of course. <clears throat> and I'm not sure how first and second alternates work, but <clears throat> with you being absent last meeting, wasn't Michelle as first alternate automatically a board member? Uh, it would have been Michelle, yes, as the yeah. first alternate. Correct. So, <clears throat> so then when um, Peter recused himself, I would have been a voting member as the second alternate. Is that correct? Um, if he recused himself. Because the, the way, the way it's, it, it's written here now, it says that when Peter recused himself, Michelle was made a voting member for that appeal. Yes. Yeah, and that's acceptable. But she was already a voting member. She was already because so it would have been you that was the voting. And member the reason at that I'm point. bringing this up is it's the first time I've gotten to cast an official ballot, and I <laughs> wanted it on the record that my first vote occurred. Nice, I like that. Excellent. So, um, so with that, that would, I would just make a note that that should be changed in the minutes. Okay, and we'll see. We'll see that that's changed. You got that, Doreen? And, 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 Thank you. And on that basis, we probably want something at the, um, <clears throat> I guess, the roll call section or something. Um, uh, noting that Michelle, in your absence, be, uh, was elevated to a voting member for the meeting. That's an excellent so. suggestion. Thank you. Not something we uh, will certainly do. Normally, we don't. Uh, we haven't had um, a full board with alternates. So forgive me if that slipped by. But we do have an entire full board tonight. So as as mentioned, uh, Shelley, um, Mr. Mr. Richard will be uh, alternates and non-voting members this evening. Okay. Seeing uh, with those changes to the minutes, any other alterations or additions we'd like to see made? Uh, there's a motion entertained on the floor to approve the minutes with the corrections being made. Mr. Frylinger, do you second? Subject to those corrections, I'll second that. Yes. Excellent. All those in favor? Uh, Mr. Frylinger? Aye. Mr. Richard? Aye. Uh, Mr. Karen? Aye. Uh, Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And Ms. Snow? Aye. Excellent. I vote aye as well. Those pass. Now let's move on to the approval of the draft written decision for the application heard at the March 9th, 2022 meeting. This is the Shoreland setback determination uh, by Sashi Misner Landscape Architecture, Architecture on behalf of Brewster Landing, uh, Brewster Harding Riverbank, excuse me. Have we all had a chance to review the notes from this determination? And are there any questions on the documents here? Okay. Seeing none, do I have a motion? I will entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Bork? So moved. Okay, is there a second? A second. Mr. Karen? Uh, all those in favor? Uh, Mr. Frylinger? Aye. Mr. Richard? 
Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Excellent, and I vote aye as well. That passes. Uh, next, we'll move on to the approval of the four written uh, draft decisions for appeals heard at the March 9th, 2022 meeting. We'll start with appeal number 2719, uh, miscellaneous appeal by PGB Holdings on 92 Broad Turn Road. Do I have, I will entertain a motion to approve the draft written decisions given that there are no comments or uh, from the board? So moved. Mr. Bork, so moved. Is there a second? I second. Mr. Karen seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Feinger, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Mr. Richard? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Uh, Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Excellent. Those go forward. Next, we will have the appeal number 2720 graph written decision. Have we all had a chance to review those? I, I have. I have. Um, I, again, like I said, reviewed the video and looked at the notes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the draft written decision for a limited reduction in yard size appeal number 2720. Mr. Bork? So moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Aye, second. Mr. Karen? Uh, Ms., uh, all those in favor? Mr. Fryinger? Aye. Mr. Richard? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Uh, Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And Ms. Snow? Aye. Excellent. And I vote aye as well. Uh, now on to the draft written decisions for appeal number 2721, limited reduction in yard size residential appeal by custom concepts. Um, Mr. Chairman, I will recuse myself from this vote. Excellent. Thank you very much for noting that on the record. Um, do I, ha I will entertain a motion to approve the draft written decisions for appeal number 2721. Mr. So moved. Mr. Bork, so moved. Is there a second? I second. Mr. Karen seconds. Uh, we'll all go down and vote again. Mr. Frylinger? Uh, you're recused. Yep. Uh, Mr. Richard? Aye. Excellent. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And Ms. Snow? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. Now we will move on to the last one. Appeal number 2722 for the draft written decision for the limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Pamela Stone on 17 Ferry Road. Has everyone had a chance to review uh, the findings of fact, conclusions of law? Um, I've reviewed the video. Uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the draft written decision for appeal number 2722. Mr. Bork? So moved. Excellent. Do I have a second? I second. Mr. Karen seconds. And all those in favor, Mr. Fryinger? Aye. Mr. Richard? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. Great. Thank you all. Now we will move on to our new appeals. As was mentioned, appeal number 2723 is tabled this month. We will not be hearing that. Uh, but we will go to appeal number 2724. This is a limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Custom Concepts on behalf of Ross Family LLC, 10 9th Street, Assessor's Map, U025, Lot 64. I'm presuming you are here to speak on behalf of the application, sir. If you would, please state your name, uh, your address, and your affiliation for the record. Sure. Mike Richman. Mike Richman, Custom Concepts Architecture here in Scarborough. Um, Thank you for coming in. I know I'm the only one tonight, so appreciate that. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Ross family of, get this right, number 10, 9th Street, requesting a limited reduction of yard size to allow for an addition and renovation for their growing family. Um, this is an oceanfront lot, therefore comes with many regulations and limitations, and, and a rather tricky one at that. Um, Due to these regulations, as well as the location of the existing structure on the property, we find ourselves requesting this relief from the zoning board. This parcel is located at the end of 9th Street and borders the beach. The natural topography is relatively flat, and it contains a seasonal cottage and a detached garage. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the Ross family has owned this property for over 70 years, and their goal, basically, is to update the property just with a safe, efficient home for future generations to use. The property is not located within a shoreland zone. Approximately half of the property is in the frontal dune, and the other half is in the rear dune. About half of the southern portion of the cottage currently sits within the front setback to 9th Street, as I will show you. Of note, 
9th Street, which is just to the south of the property, was extended by the town of Scarborough many years after the cottage was constructed. Uh, the town has stated that they don't have any plans to extend the pavement down the rest of 9th Street, but it was it's this road extension that placed the whole southern side of the Ross Cottage within this setback. Um, without this extension by the, by the town, um, this area would likely have a, a less setback or a different situation, and I may not even be here tonight. Um, the cottage itself was constructed around 1900 and has basically reached a point where it just has to be replaced or, or, or addressed. The frame is showing considerable signs of rot, shifting, and simply is not built to be utilized as a year-round home. The framing members are small or too small to efficiently insulate, um, and the frame sits on old timbers and, and blocks, you know, typical Pine Point type cottage. The cement block wall seen at the base in some of the photos is primarily a skirt just to enclose the, enclose the area below the cottage. So it's our opinion that actually the whole cottage should just be replaced. But due to the regulations involved with the town and the DEP, uh, we find that approach very challenging. Therefore, we've developed a design that I'll show you to renovate and add rather than replace to be in compliance with the regulations. So the design process on this one kind of led down a few paths. Um, first, can we just renovate? That's always my first choice. Um, but in order to accomplish this up to current building and energy codes, we would have to sister all new framing to the existing members, which reduces interior space as well as adds a lot of thermal mass to the structure, making it a lot less energy efficient. It also becomes a bigger issue because due to the floodplain on this property, we have to raise the structure up to provide sort of a, a flow through foundation according to DEP and FEMA standards. The second path that we went down was just removing everything, remove the garage, move the cottage altogether, um, and design a new one in a more conforming location. But as you can see on the survey, um, the, the pink that you see shows the setback lines. It gets very narrow, and we just couldn't find a way to fit a reasonable house and garage within that available area. Any design that fit within that narrow envelope simply becomes impractical. It's only about 15 feet wide on average. So as I mentioned, the, the southern portion, nearly half the cottage, lies over the front setback line towards 9th Street. So to work through this, I measured the existing large dormer that faces the road. and then develop the new design to infill that same space. However, slightly taller, therefore the need for this request tonight. The current cottage has low flat roofs on the front and the back side of it. So we've designed flat roofs in those locations to be in compliance. Asking, we're asking for the relief. The proposed design is a much more modern style than the current cottage. Um, and this roof design was developed for a few reasons. Um, first, it roughly follows the side setback line towards 9th Street, meaning the taller portion of the roof fits within the building window, and the lower portion is the portion that extends into the building setback. That's the setback. This part is within the setback. That's the building window. And this part isn't. So this is the lower section, upper section. So 
Secondly, the, the Ross family really wants to use solar panels on this house. And the slope of the south facing roof allows for a proper pitch for panels to be installed onto it. I mean, in all honesty, we could design a roof much flatter and not have to ask for this request. However, I'm sure we've all seen roofs that were relatively flat. Panels were put on top and they're raised up and tilted. And um, we just didn't think that would be an attractive way to accomplish this for, for not only the owners, but for the neighborhood. Therefore, we raised this roof up to a modest 412, 4 and 12 pitch to accomplish this goal. So the other day, Brian correctly pointed out a goof on my drawing ZB6, this one here. Um, I initially only showed the need for this request over the middle section. But he was correct. Um, in reality, it would extend the length of the house. So this sheet here um, is changed. This reflects um, what, what we're asking for. It's a pretty minor difference between the two. So specifically, what we're requesting is the total height has not changed, seven foot, eight inches. The total depth is the 10 feet that the limited setback might allow. And the total length is 49 foot two. So due to this odd green shape here, it's kind of hard to give an actual area. I mean, I can, but it's kind of fruitless. Um, but in terms of volume, it equates to approximately 1,082 square feet. So it's not a, it's, it's, about, it's about the size of a large shed. Um, and with that, I'll answer any questions. I have a question. Um, yes. <clears throat> so a lot of, uh, you had mentioned that with the solar panels, the reason for pitching the roof this way is to really accommodate the solar panels that are gonna be going on here. And if not, you could potentially not have to come before us if that wasn't in a factor. Or would there be other factors as well? Sorry, I don't see the hand mic up here, so I'll do this so I can no, kind right. of do you. both. In, in reality, if we weren't doing, or if the intent wasn't to have solar panels, yeah, this, this could be lower or flatter, if you will, and avoid this green area altogether. Gotcha, okay, that's his problem. It was, it, but it was such a minor, what we're hoping, a minor ask <clears throat> and, the, and the right thing to do environmentally. We said, no, let's, let's give this a shot, so. And to be clear, you would still need the variance request for the top, what I think of as the top roof, right? That, yeah. Correct, gotcha. Gotcha. correct. <clears throat> Uh, yes, Mr. Richmond, uh, how many abutters have solar panels in this neighborhood? That's an excellent question. I have a cheat sheet that might be able to help me. <clears throat> <There's, laughs> I believe there's only one that has solar panels down there on the beach, at that, at that end of the beach. Any other questions from the board while we're thinking about it's, uh, this? For, it's further ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you. The road that you had mentioned, um, the, that was put in by the town, but is currently not being maintained. It pretty much only exists there on paper, on the deed, that they're, they have a right of way there, or that it technically is a road, but just unused and unmaintained by the town. Just want to confirm that for me. Yeah, and, and Brian, please correct me if I'm saying this incorrectly. So 9th Street is, is a paved road. It comes down to just past their driveway. And this, this is what was accepted by the town. I don't know the correct term. Right. Um, yeah, so this, this whole section right here. So yes, they, they maintain it, it but uh, on paper, I believe it's the town's. Gotcha. Any other comments from the board? <clears throat> yeah, it's Richard. It, um, <clears throat> in looking at the diagram, is it is it correct that you're adding to the first floor to connect the garage? Is that a new piece of the building? 
correct. And, and there's no issues with doing that in the shoreline zone or in the, in the frontal dune or the rear dune with, with that actually adding footage? I apologize in advance if this makes you dizzy. Mm -hmm. Excellent question. Technically, and luckily for us, the division line between front dune, ocean, and rear dune is pretty much exactly at that juncture. So the proposed expansion that we're doing technically is in the rear dune. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Brian and I and, and uh, a, a representative from the DEP have been through it, and pending tonight's review, I'll be submitting to the DEP, but permissible. Other questions? Okay, great. Uh, what we'll do now is uh, go through each of the criteria on the application. You can just read whatever you had in, uh, on the application into the record. Uh, it just has to be read in just so that we have a recording of it. So, start with number one. The existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant non-conforming lot of record. Yes, according to town records, the home was constructed around 1900. Excellent. Uh, number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, yes, it will. The property would remain a single family residence and allow the Ross family to all be together to enjoy their home in the same manner as other properties. Uh, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be <coughs> practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. No, not in a practical way for a few reasons. About half of this property is within the frontal dune. DEP regulations do not allow for any expansion horizontally within this zone. Second, the allowable building window is long and skinny. We could not find a practical solution for the design of a new home within this building window inclusive of a garage. And number three, the relief is, request, the relief is requested only for the area directly above the existing structure. Therefore, our expansion is only vertical and not horizontal. Excellent, thank you. Number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. No, they will not. Many of the similar properties in the immediate area are of similar scale to the proposed design. And you can please refer to the aerial image to, to support that. Great. And lastly, number five, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion <coughs> building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. No, they have not. Great. You can confirm that, Mr. Longstaff? That's correct. Excellent. Okay. I guess before we go into... Well, thank you very much. I think if we have any questions, we'll let you know. Um, have we had any uh, emails, phone calls, written letters? I have received no emails or no phone calls or no written letters, no threatening presences in my office. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'll open the floor for any public hearing or public uh, comment. Seeing none, the public comment is closed. Let's all go into just the board discussion now for each of the criteria. Uh, any general comments before we get started from any of the board members? Yes, Mr. Frelinger. I have a question for Brian. It, it seemed, and, and this is maybe more theoretical, it's in the frontal dune area, but it's not in the shoreland area. So that it just seems counterintuitive to me. So the shoreland zone um, begins at the highest annual tide line, which is quite a way yeah, okay. seaward. Got it. And so that's a 250-foot strip, and I think it butts kind of butts up against the property line there. It, it kind of a little bit of the property might be in the shoreland zone, but that building, the whole Nothing, building okay. window, is not. So okay. we're not faced with that that whole issue of 
meeting the setback to the greatest practical extent, that, that goes, that's not even a consideration. Got it. That's helpful. It was just, again, sort of counterintuitive when seeing the application. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah the, dune, the dune actually can stretch far back into, you know, what you would call inland territory, actually. Great. Other comments, questions? Okay. We'll start with the first one. Um, run the criteria. We'll vote on each one of these as we go. Uh, the existing building or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, where the lot is a vacant non-conforming lot of record. I'll start down here, Mr. Freilinger. I think it's been demonstrated by the applicant and by the town record, so yes, I agree. Okay, excellent. Anything to add, Mr. Uh, Richard or Mr. Karen? Anything down here, Mr. Bork, Ms. No. Stevenson, Ms. Snow? Yeah, this one's a pretty... A pretty straightforward one. The, the town records show that it was constructed around 1900. Um, uh, all those in favor and uh, understanding of this piece of criteria, Mr. Freilinger? Aye. Mr. Richard? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. And Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And Ms. Snow? Aye. Excellent. Uh, and just for the record, um, Mr. Richard and Ms. Snow, as stated earlier, are alternates to eating, but we like to have them uh, vote with, together with the board. <clears throat> I'll uh, just let you know. I'm sorry. Yeah. What did I say? It's no. I am sorry. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss Stevenson. Just one other thing too is yes. it, It's Richard Silkman. So it's, it's when you first said oh it, I thought you were. I thought I you were. I didn't bother. <laughs> I thought you were Southern. And, you know, Mr. Richard, and then I realized that wasn't the way. You were, no, I was just doing it incorrectly. So thank you, Mr. <laughs> Silkman. I apologize. I think nope. the board should move to replace the chair with someone who can get the names right. <laughs> with someone who can actually learn how to speak. <laughs> no, no, yes. No, yes. No problems. No Goodness. harm. No fault. This is what happens when you're when you're sick for a month. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. I'll start down on this end with Ms. Snow. Yes, it will remain a single family resident. Excellent. Ms. Stevenson? Yeah, agreed. I think they've demonstrated that. Mr. Bork? Uh, my only concern was the solar panel, which is basically nice to have, but not necessary, certainly not required by code. Uh, but after hearing that there is one other home in the neighborhood that has solar panels, and that certainly is the trend going forward in terms of, of energy conservation, I think that uh, this is uh, acceptable, put it that way. Excellent. Mr. Karen? Agreed. Um, Single family residence, been in the family for 70 years, hoping to stay, um, expanding uh, the footprint uh, vertically, and not the overall on the property. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Silkman. <clears throat> yes, no, no problems here. And delighted that they're putting solar panels on. Our house down there does have solar panels. We're one of, one of the few. And whenever I see a remodeling that doesn't have it, it's like a dagger in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Freilinger. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure I have the same uh, emotive reaction to the lack of solar panels on other homes, <laughs> but um, I, I, I agree with everything that, that's been said. And also we'll point out that uh, there's been um, a lot of renovation all along this area to make sure homes can continue to be um, enjoyed uh, as they reach the point in their lifespan that this one clearly has. So um, it's clearly within the, the, this neighborhood's pattern. Yep. And again, as mentioned, this is uh, going to remain a single family residence. They haven't indicated any plans to rent or anything like that. Um, so all those in favor of the criteria number two being met, Mr. Freilinger? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Uh, Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And Ms. Snow? Aye. Okay. And I vote aye as well. Number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. I'll start down here, Mr. Freilinger. I think this has been adequately demonstrated, and we see this a lot in sort of the, the beach areas of the town where um, development that took place 100 plus years ago <coughs> involved lot sizes that, would, that, that simply have building envelopes that can't be can't be addressed with today's building standards or with today's needs. Um, I think the applicant's done a good job and a, frankly a clever job of navigating the um, the frontal and rear dune um, requirements um, and, um, and, and has done so with a design that um, 
it is very much in keeping with what has been renovated and what's been being put in this part of Pine Point right now. So I'm, I'm um, I think the uh, the applicants demonstrated the, the the needs for item three. Mr. Selkman. I have nothing to add to that. I agree. Mr. Karen. I believe that the appellant has done a great job tonight with the presentation, especially with the graphics, the boards, um, clearly demonstrating the building footprint uh, with respect to the existing structure and the proposed, showing that um, the feasibility of fitting this all within that sort of constraint is not uh, really uh, possible or practical. Um, it also speaks to, and we heard tonight, about the front dune versus rear and uh, where it sits on the site. So I'll set there. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Bork? Uh, I think the applicant has done a very good job uh, complying with the myriad uh, regulations in, in this type of property. Uh, and it's a very attractive uh, structure, and um, I think it'll blend in very well with the uh, surroundings. Ms. Stevenson? Uh, nothing to add. I agree with all the comments. Mm -hmm. Ms. Snow? I associate myself with the previous remarks. Excellent. Um, I know, just again noting that uh, the DEP doesn't allow for any uh, horizontal expansions within the frontal dune, which is what we're not seeing here, which is good. Um, they're, they're really trying to find a practical solution within the, within the area that they're trying to work with here, and it doesn't seem that they're asking for too much. Uh, so that being said, all those in favor of criteria number three being met, Mr. Frowlinger? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Uh, number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. I'll start down here, Ms. Snow. Uh, they will not be a, a greater impact. There's, it's still a single-family property. They're trying to stay within as small a building footprint as possible, and it's with similar scale to other properties in the neighborhood. Thank you. Ms. Stevenson? I agree with those previous comments. Mr. Bork? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Uh, we're just we're we're not voting at this point. We're just kind of uh, you know adding in uh, comments. So, Mr. Karen, no, it's you. okay. Uh, going back to number four, then. Yeah, we are on number four. Yeah. Um, with what was been presented tonight, I don't think it would be uh, outside the other uses within the neighborhood. Um, as for the size, I think as we've seen, um, modern and with a lot of the renovations on uh, this area, um, what uh, will match the existing fabric. So no concerns. Great. Mr. Silkman? <clears throat> Nothing to add. I'm fine. Mr. Frylinger? I'll point out that the only real addition of lot coverage is this little tiny wedge that connects the garage to the house, um, which is kind of interesting that it was never there in the first place. I think the design's been well considered to avoid the front, uh, as noted before, the, the front issue. Um, and to have this, as it's currently being designed, is definitely within the characteristics of other homes that would be developed today. Great. So, good. Um, yeah, I, the, the impact of this structure isn't going to be really significantly different because it's similar size to other structures that are in that area as well. I mean, it's certainly going to be getting larger, um, but it's not getting larger or out of place. Uh, to the other structures that are there already existing in the neighborhood. So that being said, uh, those in favor of criteria number four being met, Mr. Frylinger? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I'll vote aye as well. And uh, last but not least, the applicant has not commenced construction of the expansion building or structure. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Longstaff, you have confirmed that they have not so what we will do, um, excuse me, yeah. yep. go ahead. That's and correct. Yep. Thank you. Um, what we will do now is just vote up and down uh, on this one, number five, Mr. Frylinger. Aye. Sorry. Mr. Silkman. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Karen. Aye. Mr. Bork. Aye. Ms. Stevenson. Aye. Ms. Snow. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm having a hard time to speak tonight. 
Okay, that being said, I'll entertain a motion to approve appeal number 2724, the limited reduction of yard size residential by custom concepts at 10 9th Street. So moved. Uh, we have Mr. Silkman, uh, or who is well, maybe an alternate. I can't do it. I'm sorry. You can't. No, good try, though. Good yeah. try. You almost got me. So moved. So moved by Mr. Bork. Do I have a second? I second. Mr. Karen seconds. Any further discussion on the application? Seeing none. All those in favor, Mr. Freilinger? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Uh, Ms. Snow? Aye. And I'll vote aye as well in the motion and the appeal passes. We have to go through and say everything so that's vocally in the record. So Thank you all. So it is somewhat comical here, but thank you very much for your time. Okay, so we have zoning board comments. Brian's going to chat with us about our meeting in July. Um, the meeting falls on the week of 4th of July, and unless possible, we can take off. But Brian, I'll let you. Yeah, take the, it from here. the reason uh, this came up is they're going to be doing some renovations to this space. This entire space is going to require cabling and some other things. That's going to happen in the second week of July, which is the week that we would normally meet. The town uh, council does not meet twice in as they would normally do. They don't meet twice in July. So therefore, the first week of July, when they would normally meet, is open. That creates uh, an opening for us on the 6th. I think we can meet all the statutory uh, requirements for notice and, and, and that kind of stuff. The big question is, it is the week of, of the 4th of July. I know many people vacation that week or maybe in other places or, or whatever. Um, it, it, and quite frankly, if we if we can get a quorum, uh, I'm, I'm I'd be happy with that and, and just proceed. I don't expect that everybody may may be able to be here, um, but it would it would sort of make life a little easier. Otherwise, I'm going to have to try to scramble to find a, a space somewhere else in a different day of the week, different uh, maybe even a different week uh, later in the month, which then shortens up the time for the next month and and so this this would work well if like i say if we could get five <coughs> members or even four to 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 be here that that week and this is an opportunity for this as well for some members to be remote could we the you you i think based on what you guys came up with what the board came up with for a policy you can deem that an emergency if you so wished and hold the, the meeting um, either hybrid or, or totally Zoom if you wished to do mm -hmm. it that way. Okay. And we could probably do a hybrid meeting, you know, assuming that no other elements have <laughs> made that necessary. Right. No, I don't know how else to say it. Assuming COVID doesn't go crazy between now and then. Right. Um, so, so we could do a hybrid meeting whereby applicants could come in here, mm -hmm. uh, but we could still have board members be remote. And that's yep. really the whole purpose of that. That policy was to allow board members to vote remotely. Yep. Yeah, and, so, to and participate remotely. So I guess with that being said, um, uh, we don't, necessarily need to make a decision right now tonight but i'd like everyone just to kind of go home over the next month think about kind of what your personal schedule is in july um and i think i think the hybrid approach might be a good way i'm personally maybe traveling that week but i could um host the meeting and chair the meeting uh remotely yes Ms. <clears throat> if the issue is that this room is not going to be available but if we did it remotely would we need this room I mean, if we did it on the, on the 13th, if we just we said it's an emergency. Uh, that's a great remote. point. Hybrid might not be such a, I don't know, can we do a, we'd need this for a hybrid. Yes. But we, we would need it for a total Zoom. <laughs> great suggestion. And, and yeah. actually, one of the emergency things we contemplated was the, the building being shut down. Yeah. So if it is going to be unavailable, it seems like maybe all remote is the right way to go. So why don't we do this then? Let's just sit tight for now. And Brian, if you can check out with the town, if we oh, can. Uh, wait a I was going to say, I, I wouldn't have suggested that if that was the case. Because we're doing it the week before they take this room uh, out of commitment, no. we would do a hybrid meeting on the 6th. Right. No, well, why couldn't we do it on the 13th? It, just do a hybrid, meeting, just do a completely remote well, meeting on the could. 13th. So, there, so there's a couple of, I mean, there's two options for you. So we could either do, we could either do a hybrid meeting that allows <laughs> the board to participate 
and have a physical presence here in town hall because some people prefer that, mm -hmm. or we can vote. You know, we can vote to do a, a complete remote, remote and maintain the schedule on the thir on uh, what's what was that date? Thirteenth. Thirteenth. And that would be maintaining our current schedule of the second Wednesday of each month. Right. Let's let everybody go home and think about it, and we can hold a vote next month. That's May. <clears throat> That'll still be two months away. Um, let everybody think if they want, prefer to do the hybrid approach uh, the week of July 4th, bumping it up one week, or if we go entirely remote the week of July 13th, which would be our normal meeting anyways. Mr. Mr. Chair, I would be interested in hearing what, you know, if anybody has conflicts or has ideas right now, because I do need to get back to yep. um, town oh. staff to kind of let them know what we're going to do. Definitely. I didn't mean to imply yeah. that we yeah. should not talk about yeah. it tonight. I just wanted to make that as we don't feel the pressure that we have to sure. decide on it 100% in the snow. I just wanted to put in my two cents. I won't be here in May, and I'm amenable to either way in July. Okay. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I'm that same exact thing, actually. <laughs> yeah, cool. I, can, I can do either day, and I will not be available in May. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, well, let's just, let's just move the May meeting to July. <laughs> there you go. We'll do the 6th and the 13th. <laughs> Did you have a comment? Do you want to say something, Mr. Farlinger? I was going to say, just on, on that, I, I am able to attend in May. Um, and I, I think maintaining the schedule on the 13th also would help the public, because we're not the only ones who might be on vacation the week of July 4th. And appellants and other folks might, or their representatives or others, might find it challenging to make a meeting on the 6th. So um, it feels like I, I personally would would um, uh, counsel us to think about the 13th and doing it remotely. But uh, that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. Okay, cool. Mr. Karen? Um, yeah, so personally I feel more inclined for the 13th as I'm unsure of my plans for the 6th. We'll see as we move forward. Okay. Any other Mr. Bork? Yes. Um, Regarding the, uh, first of all, the 13th, uh, all remote makes a lot of sense. But the logistics of that, if this room is not available, do we have the technical ability of being able to do it somewhere else, yeah. from somewhere else? Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, I said yes before I fully listened to it. He meant, like, as far as hosting the if actual we, meeting on if YouTube. If we were to do an in-person meeting, could we do it somewhere else? Is no, that no I'm talking about on the 13th, the which would, if, if we're talking if about we do remote, a total remote meeting. We can do it We have the from technology our houses. to do that from your house. Yes. yes. Yep. Okay, fantastic. Yep. So yep. I would favor that. Yeah, we, we don't need any anything going on. Great. Correct. Yeah, this is only for streaming from here, this yep. physical room. Yep. Um, do you have enough to go on, Mr. Longstaff? Yeah, I, it, I mean, if, unless I'm... Unless I'm misinterpreting what you're saying, it sounds like the board is leaning towards a fully remote meeting on the 13th at I this would, point. I would say so, yes. Sure. Okay. Um, that way, again, as was pointed out, I, Mr. Frying, are you keeping it regular for the public so that they're not expecting anything else and they don't have to, mm -hmm. applicants will not have to make a big stretch for the 4th of July week. That's a great suggestion. Mr. Silkman, thank you very much. And great comments, everyone. Uh, other comments, items to discuss for the board? I just have one more, just a, uh, an interesting thing. I thought it might be nice to sort of put it out there. Tomorrow, I'll be traveling up to Augusta to join the board of directors for the Maine Building Officials and Inspectors Association. We're going to be recognized by the state legislature for our 50th anniversary as an organization in, in the That's state of Maine. That's really cool. That promotes uh, code enforcement and, and building code. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of special and nice. Yeah. This is our 50th anniversary year. We'll be celebrating that in the spring at the spring conference in May and getting a nice recognition from the, the state legislature tomorrow. That's really cool. So, uh, yeah. But we certainly recognize and appreciate all the work that you put in, Brian and Doreen and everybody in the planning office. So it's a, it's a lot to ask for, uh, for what you do here for the ZBA, and we really appreciate it as well. I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Frylinger? Second. Mr. Second. Bork? All those in favor, just raise your hands. Great. That's unanimous. Thank you all very much.